Hello, welcome back to another episode of Nobody is Doing It Right, the podcast for those who are uncertain. My name is Kat. I am one of these perpetually uncertain people. I am a writer, digital creator, self-awareness guide. Um, If you don't know already, I offer one-to-one calls if you want to talk about these topics in more detail. I'm not a therapist. I'm just somebody who has a very specific perspective on these types of topics. Um, I also have a community that you can join, like a membership, where you can read my weekly articles. I've only just started it, so I have three articles up right now about topics that I find really interesting. And they are from like a more creative, nonfiction type of perspective. Um, But I'll be updating them every week, so you'll get more of those throughout the year. I'm also considering um, starting like a separate type of podcast on there where the subscribers can request what specifically I talk about. Because... This current podcast and all my videos and the content I put out right now are things that I just want to talk about. (laughs) I just want to talk about them and sometimes they change throughout the week. I don't always have like a set plan or schedule for anything. And so, yeah, I think that might be a better option for people who really want to hear my thoughts on specific topics that are weighing on their minds. So, yeah, um, for today's episode, we're going to talk about how if you don't know what you want, you'll end up accepting whatever you get. And you'll convince yourself that what it is that you get is right for you. And this is something that I made a TikTok video on a little while ago that kind of made a little, a few people upset um, only because I think it came off like I was saying, you know, everybody should take the time to know what they want and figure themselves out. And realistically, not everybody has the opportunity to do that in life. Many of us can't do that because we are in a society in a culture that requires us to acquiesce to certain structures and play certain roles in order to survive. And so sometimes even being aware of the fact that you're doing something that's not really aligned for you is painful and will ruin your opportunity and ability to just physically or emotionally survive. And so, yeah, it's not always possible for everyone. Um, But there are moments, I think, where if you do have the opportunity to understand what you want, who you truly are, what you truly want. It's important that you take those opportunities and try to figure out what it is you truly want. Because if you spend your whole life fitting into roles or fitting into boxes that aren't truly for you, that you don't genuinely enjoy, when you don't really know what it is you want, you haven't taken the time to think about it, to consider it, to ask yourself, like, do I even like this thing? Whatever appears on your path is going to be what you think you should like or what you think is right for you. Right? You won't be seeing more options and opportunities outside of this path because you haven't thought about it. And this is something that I've had to deal with myself in my life. Right, I, I kind of feel like there was a shift in my perspective on things just a couple of years ago. I feel like my early 20s into my mid 20s, I was kind of following a path of kind of like with blinders on in a sense. And I think that's just because you're kind of told throughout your life, like this is how things need to be and that's that. And I guess before your prefrontal cortex is fully formed, it's much easier to just accept things as they are without having the full cognitive ability to see everything for what it is and see yourself for what you are. And so a lot of my life I led just with the idea of like, yep, this is it. One step after the other on this path and that's what it is. And honestly, to an extent, living like that was actually a little bit more blissful, (laughs) a little bit, just because there isn't as much awareness Um, So once you take that veil off and you gain all this awareness of what you want truly and who you are, things get a little bit tougher. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say it's all roses and sunshine and it's so much better to always be so self-aware. Consciousness is a difficult thing for humans. You know, the more conscious you are, the more you, you suffer at the same time, right? Because you're so much more aware of everything that's happening and all the moving pieces. But to a certain extent in my early 20s, I was following a specific path that was kind of laid out in front of me because of what was expected in my life and my family and just what I saw throughout most of my life. But as I got older and I began to, well, actually when I started therapy and I started learning more and more about myself and the things I do and why I do them and my childhood wounds and all that stuff, the, the path became so much broader. There were so many, there were so many you know, roads leading off of it that, or like stream, kind of like a river or something, like there were more streams leading into it that I didn't realize before. And as my perspective opened up, the opportunities and options of what I truly could do or would do or would want to do also opened up. 
And now that can be anxiety inducing because the more opportunities and options you have, the more stressful it is, right? You have to make more decisions and be more specific about what you truly want. And if you have analysis paralysis, that's difficult to do. But I think it's so valuable and so important to really take any opportunity, any chance you get to ask yourself, okay, what do I want? And now this isn't something that you can truly figure out in just a sitting. Like, let me just sit down and ask what I want. And that's that. I think there is also a level of intuition that has to go into that. There's a level of just being and existing in your humanness that that is a part of this process, right? Because I feel like this idea of what do I want? What do I want to do? Is rooted in the doing part of things, right? Very much rooted in hustle culture, capitalism, like always going, 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 constant growth all the time. That's not how humans or nature or the universe functions. Um, there, you need time to just be, to understand, okay, if I'm just being, if I'm just following my intuition right now, that's guiding me from one place to the next because of what genuinely just feels right, right now, not even right in a couple of years, but right for right now. Okay, if I'm letting myself do that, then kind of naturally you will flow into the things that are for you. But if you don't give yourself the opportunity to sit in that beingness, you won't really understand what you are outside of the expectations and identities that you've had on for so long. And so I think it's so important to take the time to do that, to really sit with yourself as you are and stop trying to always be, or sorry, stop trying to always do, like, what do I want? What do I want to do? I got to figure it out right now. That'll come. You know, I think when we stop making it an action that needs to be taken and just like, that's just something that you, you are currently being, it makes the process of understanding who you are and what you want so much easier because there's no forcefulness to it, right? There's no pressure. And I think it is that forcefulness, that pressure, the figuring it out, the you know, kind of like when we're in school and we have to figure out what we want to do in university and what major we want and what job we want when we're like 16. It's overwhelming. It's scary. And then we end up doing things that aren't right for us. They're not aligned for us. They don't feel aligned because also humans are constantly in flux. We're constantly changing. So what we wanted then won't be what we want in the future and it'll constantly be changing. But I think the key is to always be in a state of being so that you can listen to your intuition, to your higher self, who tells you, okay, this is not it anymore, right? You need something else right now. And let me guide you to it. Let, just let me, let me lead you to it by just being. Let go of the steering wheel a little bit. And uh, just, just trust in what you're feeling, right? Because deep down, I think we all know. We all know deep down what we truly want, what we truly feel lights us up and gives us purpose but we just have to let ourselves lean into it or let us let ourselves let go and let flow (laughs) in a sense right so yeah and if you feel like you are just kind of doing things you're, you're doing the motions of things you're just existing but not from your own accord but because you feel like this is what I should be doing it's the life I was kind of that was planned out for me let yourself just be let yourself let go of all the stuff that you're trying to control and, and just sit with that. Sit with yourself and see what comes up of what you truly are. Because realistically, if you haven't been doing that, what you have around you right now is probably not right for you, but you've had to convince yourself it is, right? And again, this isn't to shame or guilt anybody. It's a survival mechanism. It's a coping mechanism. We need to do that sometimes. But over time, that's not satisfying. It's not fulfilling, right? Right. And that's the sad reality of it. But in order to get to a little bit more satisfaction, you don't have to be perfectly satisfied and perfectly fulfilled, but just a little bit more. It's just about asking yourself, is what I have right now everywhere, everything that's around me right now, is that right? Like, does that feel right? Or is there some sort of discontentment there that I could work on a little bit or not even work on, just let myself feel and see where I'm called to instead, you know? So I don't know, hopefully this was insightful. This is more of a ranting kind of episode where I'm just talking about a topic in more detail because I think, yeah, I think there was a little bit of confusion in it. I've also made an extra TikTok video about this topic in more detail as well, but I thought it would be important to share on my podcast also. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed this, please 
rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify. I'm also on YouTube as well. We're almost at a thousand subscribers at the moment, which means when we hit a thousand, I'll be able to start doing uh, YouTube lives, which would be really fun. And I'll be able to also save those lives as video so people can reference them. Um, So yeah, go ahead and subscribe to me on there too, if you are interested. And I'll be back again next week with another episode.